attention. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Good morning, Mari. Good morning, Kate. And actually, if you're scrolling through Facebook late at night, good evening. Good evening to you. <laughs> Whatever time of day it is. <laughs> so um, I'm just chatting to people at the moment uh, around the pluralism conference that's coming up on the 16th and 17th of July. And so I thought you being one of those people that was involved in the pluralism, in the development of pluralism, early doors, and also having had a, a kind of role in, in the BACP. So you, you recently stepped down as being a governor of the BACP for, it was many years you were a governor of the BACP, wasn't it? <laughs> Nine years. Nine years, right, lo long standing. So um, I thought it would be really nice to get the opportunity to, to yeah, talk to you about your perspective on it. And, and I, I guess what are you looking forward to for the conference this year? Oh, thanks, Kate. Well, I'm really honoured to be uh, taking my place amongst the, the big boys. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm really excited about the conference. I, I think, uh, I, I mean, the Pluralistic Conference has always been such a, a kind of inclusive affair. And, yeah, it just... Uh, every year it doesn't it feels to disappoint uh, you know there's something about a place for everyone and I think I guess in terms of pluralism I think um, you know it, it, as it's evolving I kind of see it as a way forward for our profession I mean I think I mean our profession is we, we've kind of done ourselves a disfavor because we're we're very much in silos and rather than being I mean I, I see pluralism as a way that we can unite our profession in some way I mean if you think about teaching or medicine like we're not they're, they're not siloed they're like here is our profession we're, we're medicine we're, we're teachers we're social workers and we've kind of gone well we're person-centered counsellors or gestalt counsellors that but I I just think like pluralism is exciting for me because it's a way that's like everybody you know it's like counseling works you know and there's different ways it's a, it's kind of un it's a framework to unite our our profession so and I think the conference does this it kind of really values uh, everybody's contribution and, and there's so many uh, different modalities that are represented and and finding a kind of way to to connect across the profession so yeah it's, it's such an exciting event. Oh, brilliant. OK. And I, I get, yeah, I think what you're saying really resonates with me. I think there is a sort of it's a space where everyone is welcome, no matter where they're coming from. And nobody is going to be sort of, well, you're not one of us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it feels like a real home for, for counselling, you know, like of, of, of all shapes and sizes, which is really great because it's so valuing of each approach. Like each approach has something important to offer for clients, at, you know, at, at certain times. So, yeah, it's really great. Brilliant. brilliant. And so I suppose then you, you can take a view from a, from a sort of like overview from a professional standpoint. But also I think you've got... I guess I, I, I want to ask you what you're what you're doing at the conference, but <laughs> what you're bringing, Mary. I'm going to have to stop. I'm really sorry. Yeah, it's okay, don't worry. <laughs> Let's start I, again. I think I rambled. I'm going, what? No, I was forgetting what I was supposed to ask. We were going to talk about. Oh, you didn't ramble. What you did was really good, and I was like, what am I asking next? All right. <laughs> what am I doing at the conference? Yeah, what What are you doing at the conference? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, so at the conference, I'm doing two things. Uh, so I'm part of a panel on the Friday night uh, uh, with, uh, I think Andrew Reeves is going to be uh, hosting us. Um, and the panel, I mean, it's got a great lineup, you know, so we've got um, Mick Cooper, we've got um, Anna Fox, Richard Knight and Mariah Levitinus. So uh, I think I've probably said that wrong. <laughs> Sorry, Mariah. <laughs> Check the pronunciation. <laughs> Yes, um, but I don't. I have no idea what's going to happen there, and I think I guess I'm with Andrew as a host. Anything can happen, uh, so we kind of expect the unexpected. And then the other uh, thing that I'm doing, uh, I'm involved in, is the research group on the Saturday. So this is really exciting. So we were kind of thinking, how might um, pluralism? Um, what my implications might it have for research? What might a pluralistic inquiry look like? And this was started, this research group was started by your wonderful PhD 
PhD student, Marie Claire Murphy. So she's done a wonderful job of hosting us and organising us. And um, yeah, and the, the the discussions that we've been having have been so rich and how like how do we prioritize certain types of knowledge and ways of knowing and what might it be if we're we've got Lickella Blunden talking about her co-creation what would it be like if we're collaborative in our research what if pluralistic ideas you know what began to uh to to, to what, what might they say of value so this is just really continuing the conversation that we had at the BACP workshop and I think what was brilliant about that was getting people's uh, you know, input as to this, because this is not fully formed. This is just emerging. So, yeah, really looking forward to that. And uh -huh. I'm gonna, yeah, go on. Yeah, I was going to say, you're, you're going to be talking about your <laughs> your research, which has had a really profound impact on um, on the sightless community, I think. Well, that's really lovely of you to say. I'm going to I'm going to be talking about uh, the programme of research that I've done. Yes, I, I, I myself. Um, registered blind and I've spent my research career looking at uh, how it, it blindness impacts on people psychologically and, and working collaboratively with RNIB and other stakeholders to produce a counselling package for uh, for counsellors to, to, to kind of understand, better understand the kind of specific psychological aspect of sight loss. So yeah, no, I'm really excited to present that. I'm, I'm doing a kind of five minute, well, I think it's four minute overview of a 10 year work. So it's a quick whistle stop to pass it down. In a, in a, <laughs> <laughs> but I think you were right. I mean, it's a, to me, it was a really good example of the, the, the voices of, of in research so sometimes research is done too yes. but actually you weren't just doing research with people with sight loss but you you were you brought your lived experience to that and I think that's, that's yeah. amazing hasn't it I think it has I think there's that kind of insider perspective which is actually you know can be kind of you can be blindsided <laughs> pardon the pun, but because you, you don't see kind of what's happening outside but the insider perspective is really empowering. I mean, it's, and in some ways, you know, my own uh, dealing with sight loss has been kind of helped by uh, by working on this research program. So it's been, uh, yeah, it's been an amazing 10 years and I'm really happy to share it, yeah. Well, really looking forward to that, Mari. And um, yeah, thanks very much for, for chatting to me this morning or this evening, depending whether you're scrolling through Facebook or not. <laughs>